Hi, I'm back for a quick update on my Vertex Painter. Uh, I did some work on it to uh, speed it up dramatically uh, and add, also added a new uh, feature for custom brushes. Um, basically, this was driven by some needs we had at my work uh, where we needed to be able to paint more than four channels at a time onto something. We need to be able to paint color plus other values. Uh, and so I basically just turned the Vertex Painter into a texture painter uh, for that and wrote a custom brush system so that we could paint any number of values down uh, at once because you can't really uh, paint more than four values in Photoshop um, at a time uh, without having to like redo brush strokes exactly the same, uh, things like that. So uh, what you're seeing here is that we have an extremely tessellated series of meshes. There's um, 512 by 1024 verts here. Uh, in the old system, this would have taken about three seconds per frame when you drew, uh, but now you can see actually that it is super smooth and we can draw on this mesh in real time and there's no hiccups or glitches or anything. Uh, I'm running on a MacBook Pro, um, so you know it's a decent machine, but it's not cutting edge desktop or something like that. Uh, so the other feature that I added was this uh, idea of, of custom brushes. Uh, and what a custom brush is, is a little class that you can define uh, to determine when you move the mouse, you know, what should happen to the vertices. And you can edit any of the uh, settings and the vertices in your custom brush. Um, so I created an example custom brush, which is a noise brush. And if I select this brush, uh, it's a little scriptable object. Um, I have my normal controls over uh, brush fall off and flow and things like that. Uh, but I can also have additional controls for this brush. Uh, that are scripted um, uh, in this brush object. And so in this case, it is a brush that applies a simplex noise function. Um, so if I turn up the flow a little bit and make the brush a little larger, uh, I can paint down simplex noise uh, you know, onto my color channels as an example of something you can do with a custom brush. And I can come in here and you know, change the frequency of these things um, and make it large and then you get a different type of noise. So um, anyway, the uh, point is not so much the noise brush as just the ability for uh, you to define brush brushes. So uh, for instance, in my work, uh, we're going to be painting down um, three chroma values, which are really just RGB sort of values, uh, an alpha value, and then we need to pay a fifth value. Uh, so we're going to actually have the brush target uh, different UV channels plus color channels all as one brush so that we can define sort of sub-materials and then paint down those sub-materials and have our shader uh, draw special things based on those values. So that's uh, really cool because it's hard to um, manage multiple maps in painting programs a lot of times and uh, this is a way if you're working with vertex data that you can uh, do this for, um, uh, for your own uh, shaders. Um, so, uh, the way the custom brushes work is that uh, they're scriptable objects, and um, i turn this off for a second, and I go to my project view, uh, included in the editor folder here, this is noise brush, um, and it just has a little brush data here, this is what's stored on disk, um, and I can right click create uh, my noise brush from the menu. So the way this works is that I have a file, which you can just add these to your project, if they're unique to your project. Um, and you can make one of these uh, custom brush objects. And in my base, uh, case, um, I just called it, um, I did here, oops, painter noise brush, here we go. Um, so what this does is inherit from a class called uh, custom, uh, Vertex Painter Custom Brush. Uh, in my namespace. And then uh, you can add your uh, create asset menu to create the scriptable object uh, because this is a scriptable object uh, class. And so if you look at this, um, basically what it has is it has an enumeration for channels and a function called get channels where what you do is implement this and say, hey, this brush affects these channels. So you can say, I'm going to affect the colors. And then the vertex uh, painter system will make sure that there's a color array allocated for you, etc. Uh, and then you implement you can implement a preview color if you want to change the color of the the ball or or um, you know the helper object uh, for the brush. 
And there's a uh, get lerper function, which is basically a function that you write to uh, lerp the value towards the brush value. Uh, and that's how all the painting is done. And then there's a get brush, brush object where you can pass it custom data uh, that you're going to use in your lerping function. Uh, and finally, there's a draw GUI section that lets you draw a custom GUI for your brush. Um, so if we actually go to um, that brush here, which let me just close some windows. Um, right here is an example of the noise brush. Um, and so we just inherit from that class. And then I make a little uh, brush class, which is serializable with a frequency and amplitude in it. Uh, again, you could just return a float if that's all you need, but you can also write little classes to hold your brush data. Um, so I have one of those nude up for the user. And then my brush is going to affect the color channel, so I just return that. If I was going to affect multiple channels, then I can just order them together and say, great, I'm also going to affect the normals. And then my brush could paint into the colors and the normals at the same time, or whatever you need to do. Um, so here I can return the preview color because I'm painting noise. It's not a great preview for the sphere, um, so I just made it yellow. Uh, and then on get brush object, I just return that brush data. And so um, that will uh, pass to me in my lerper function the brush data that I'm going to use to do the, um, the actual uh, blending here. Uh, so then I also have a little draw GUI function that I can override. And in this case, I'm just making controls for the frequency and the amplitude. If you've ever written editor controls, uh, it's, it's very simple. It's um, just like writing them, like an on GUI function uh, for the editor. Um, so then finally, the last function I override is this one here, where you return the uh, lerper uh, delegate. Uh, and so that is just returning this lerp function. Um, so you can make that an anonymous delegate, but then it's going to allocate memory. So um, uh, I prefer to write them as actual functions. Uh, so my lerp function uh, follows the delegate format for the lerper, which is basically it takes it, get, it gets a paint job, which is uh, what I use to wrap all of the edits to a mesh. It gets an indice for the index and the vertex, the vertex index that you're going to work on. It gets your um, brush passed to you, so your brush data. Um, whatever it is, if it's a flow to color or a full brush class, uh, will be passed as an object so that you can uh, cast it there. And it gets the pressure amount, which is basically how much uh, you should lerp towards the, the brush value. Um, so in this case, I'm, I'm generating some noise. So what I first do is I get my brush data, and then I get the stream uh, out of the job. The stream is the... Uh, so the job contains information about the whole paint job over the, the mesh that we're working on. And the stream contains the modifications. Um, so the next thing I do is I grab the position out of the stream and I use a special function called get position. What this does is it basically says if we've modified the position of these vertices, then return that position. If not, return the actual uh, position of the original mesh. Uh, and so that means if somebody has gone and deformed this mesh, we'll still get the right position uh, for this function. Um, so uh, we get that position, and that's also been cached so that we don't have to uh, get the whole mesh data back from uh, the CPP side of things, uh, which makes this very fast. Uh, so then what I do is I convert this local space position into the world space position um, using the job as a pointer to the renderer of the mesh, and so I just get its local to world matrix and uh, multiply it and that puts it into world space. Um, and so now I have the world space point. Uh, I can use this to generate my 3D noise. Uh, and so basically I do, if you're not familiar with 3D noise, don't work about, worry about this, uh, but I do some frequency and amplitude stuff and generate some simplex noise uh, given that position to generate the actual noise. Uh, but this could be whatever you're doing if you're you know changing colors or whatever. Um, and so then this is really the meat of the function right here, is that uh, given a, um, a target color, uh, I get the color from the colors or, uh, from the stream. So I just get for this vertex, give me the color. Uh, and then I'm lerping, using math lerp, uh, that color towards the noise value. So this is going to make a grayscale color. Uh, and then I reset that, I set the color back on the stream. And then that's all you have to write. Uh, so if this is if this is confusing to you, this writing this lerp function, 
Uh, there's a million examples in, um, in the painting uh, window of the ones that I already use for, for everything. So um, the ones you probably want to look at are things like, oh, here's painting into the color RGBA. So I get the paint job, I get the stream out of it, and all I'm doing is lerping the current color uh, towards the uh, color that's been passed into me, the target color, by the rate, the amount that the pressure plus um, fall off of the brush has computed. Uh, and you can see I have other ones for just doing, you know, the color on the green channel or on the X channel of the UVs, etc. Um, so basically, this is how the internals of the system work. It's just a bunch of little delegate functions. And what happens is, is when you make a paint stroke, it, it gets one of these functions to apply the stroke and then um, uh, uses it to apply uh, the brush data. Um, so this little custom uh, base class allows you to write your own brushes. Um, probably I am the only one who will ever do this uh, because I do crazy things in vertex shaders. Um, but if you're a shader guy and you uh, really have a bunch of information you need to get onto your vert vertices and you want to be able to do it in real time and actually see the results and that information doesn't work so well in a texture or you're tired of flipping back and forth between Photoshop, making little edits and then flipping back and seeing what it looks like, uh, then this can be really, really powerful uh, to let you do things like paint terrain and, and control all your elements together. Um, and yeah, and the other great thing about it for everyone else is that uh, it forced me to optimize this thing uh, in a major way so that it is extremely fast. Um, with really high numbers of objects and meshes, you can see that this thing is built out of a ton of little planes uh, just so that I could um, stress test it. Uh, and everything keeps up really well now. Uh, so yeah, if you, uh, for some reason, are, if this is the first video of this series that you've watched and you haven't watched the other ones, you should probably go watch the other ones first because it has a lot of good information about what this system really is. Um, and uh, this is uh, more for hardcore shader vertex people. Uh, anyway, so hope you enjoy it. And uh, yeah, thanks a lot.